Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a good day. Today we're going to be painting The Boys and Starlight from the expansion pack 2 of The Boys from Simon Games. They were given a nice Zenithal highlight. You might say, well, that's not much of a Zenithal highlight. What's left in the dark? Well, there are shadows left. Hey, calm your little booties down here. We're trying to speed paint through these miniatures and we're trying to get them on a table quickly, right? All right. Now, I'm going to have challenge I'm going to be challenging myself in a future video though to actually take time on a miniature and show you what it is to have a difference in speed painting, normal painting, and really taking your time on a miniature. But that's for a future video, so keep your eye out on that. So if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and you'll see what's going on. Even if you don't like the certain miniatures that I'm painting, just the techniques I'm using and what I'm trying to accomplish with the miniature should give you a nice feel of how either the speed paints work and so on and so forth. Um, anywho, uh, we're going to be, I'm not going to be actually dividing this video up into per miniature. It's going to be by paint. If you remember with the soups, I did each one individually and a lot of times the colors just repeated themselves and it was kind of annoying. So now what I'm doing is like, let's say in this instance, I'm using peachy flesh on a whole bunch of the miniatures. I'm going ahead and just doing all of those in one shot. Now, some of you are going to say, well, Kiriko in the, in the game or the, not the game, but the show. And I don't know if the comics, I never read the comics. Sorry. Uh, I know she's a little bit more Asian looking and the peachy flesh might not be doing it but on the artwork she was the same color as Huey and Starlight I'm just going with the artwork okay here folks Mother's Milk on the other hand now he's getting a warrior skin uh, put on him he's a little bit darker as well and Frenchie is getting the Crusader skin uh, he had just a little bit more different skin tone than the others so I wanted that to show and it does make a difference the Crusader skin compared to peachy flesh is just so much more different uh, to being used. And now you're able to see what uh, the three different skin tones that have, even though they have noble skin, which I'm gonna tell you right now, I used it on something else, or I will be using it on something else and not even for skin. I think that's gonna make a huge difference. Holy white now for the dog. That's terror, the dog. Yeah, he's awesome, right? Uh, this is gonna be the quickest paint job on the dog ever anyways. And then I'm using the same holy white on uh, Starlight, however, I forgot that Holy White had a lot more gray to it. So it tones her down quite a bit and I'm gonna fix that later. You're gonna see what I'm gonna do to bring her cape and her outfit back into pizzazz mode and make it look really awesome on the table. Uh, the next color I'm gonna be using is a uh, hardened leather. We're gonna be doing this on a jacket, some pants. Again, like I said, I'm going between all the miniatures I'm not focusing on just one painting that up. I'm using, you know, the paint I have, so I'm not wasting paint either. I'm not wasting your time. So it's going to be a little bit more, uh, less or more or less back and, well, more back and forth, less, you know, subtle. You won't be able to go back and say, oh, okay, how do I just paint Huey? Or how do I just paint Mother's Milk? Or how do I just paint Butcher? Well, I mean, you can go through this whole video and just watch the whole thing over and over again and share it with your friends. Um, this is an awesome box. I got this for Christmas as a present from my wife, which is amazing because she actually listens to what I like to do as a hobby. And uh, yeah, uh, Blinding Light, by the way, was just for uh, Huey's shirt there because it was pretty much white and I just want a little undertone. Occultist Cloak now for some of the clothing as well on these miniatures, as you can see. Occultist Cloak, I realized finally that there is a hint, a little tiny hint of purple in it. I never really paid attention to that before. I thought just the way it was coming out, I thought the lighting or whatever, but for some reason on these guys here, the occultist cloak is coming out with a hint of, uh, just a real small hint of purple. I don't know if any of you have ever noticed that before. Uh, it showed more on the coat then on the jeans here, but on the jeans, it shows a little bit more where it's bright. And in the recesses, it was a little bit darker. And then I realized after that Kiriko's pants were actually a light, light, or dark, light, I don't know, soft purple color. But the Occultist Cloak, I found, did a really good job. Now, if you want a nice jean look uh, to your pants or shirts or coats or whatever, Runic Gray, I find, is a great blue to use, or gray, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's bluish gray. And as you can see, I'm putting on the shirts here and the coat, and it just does a really good job. And you put it on nice and thick. You can water it down a little bit if you want. If you water it down, I find that you just don't see it anymore. So you want to just put it right out of the bottle. Now, this is the 1.0 Runic Gray, right? It's not the 2.0. I still have some 1.0s because they're still working and there's still tons in the bottles. And yeah. This next green, I wasn't sure. This might be a little too bright for the next two characters. I don't know. But Huey had a pretty bright green shirt in the art world. Well, sort of. You can see it in the top corner there. It's not super bright green, but you know what? 
in this crazy world, you gotta have some color pop, right? And I mean, you wanna see this guy on the table. Kiriko, on the other hand, although the artwork was almost identical to Huey's green, I went with the shamrock green anyways, but it kind of makes her feel a little bit more down to earth, a little bit more, less soupy, <laughs> if you want to call it that way. Hey, the, the boys, uh, Amazon Prime, you want to use uh, soupy as a word? Go nuts. <laughs> All right, Howling Sand now for Starlight's hair. I'm putting it on very thinly. Uh, the white uh, primer is still going to come through quite a bit when it dries, and it looks really good as blonde hair. Uh, next, we're using some brownish decay. Doing this on Huey's pants. Uh, Brownish Decay is a good khaki pants color, I find. Like, it does a good job on pants. Uh, it, it's also going to bring out... Um, I'm using this on the, the wood parts, like, of the hammer here. Uh, just, you know, sometimes the Brownish Decay, does a, it's a versatile paint. And this is the other reason why I'm doing this, too. I'm using the same color on different miniatures to show you that you can use it for pants, for clothing, or for a shirt, or a coat. Even sometimes hair. You can use, uh, you know, you could use a satchel brown here for clothing or hair, like I'm using on Butcher here. Mostly everyone is going to be getting a satchel brown hair. Uh, and at one point, I actually forgot to do Mother's Milk's hair with the color I was using for other stuff, and you'll see that'll come up at some point again too. Um, Anyway, so you get to see the versatility of the colors in the speed paints range. Now I know the speed paints have been out for a long time, but I've actually noticed on uh, Facebook groups and other groups I've shown that people are just getting the speed paints. So I'm hoping my videos make my way to you guys uh, because like I found out and like some other YouTubers I've mentioned, the algorithm for YouTube lately has been poopy doo. And if you don't like and comment and subscribe, or if you don't like and comment, the video just gets thrown out into the trash pretty much after 24 hours. You barely ever see it again. So please make my videos boom out there. Get them noticed because I am a simple painter who paints very simply. Some people even told me, why are you only using 10 minutes on a miniature? You could have it make it look much better. I don't have time. I've got like a thousand more miniatures to paint. And I don't want every single one of them to be parade ready. I want them to be tabletop ready. And that's what this channel is for. So again, hit that like button, okay? Every time you see one of my videos, like it. No matter, even if you don't like it, well, tough luck. Uh, just hit the don't like button, I guess. But hit that like button, okay? And then comment also, just so that YouTube remembers me. Uh, I know there's millions and millions of videos being put out there every single day. And I'm sure there's a million on speed paints and... I don't know if there's any on this the, these guys though I, i've searched and i didn't see any so come on i've got to be one of the few out there that is doing this so hey uh they're awesome miniatures by the way if you can get your hands on them i would suggest you do as you saw so i did the grim black on all the boots i did that on his straps i'm doing this on i don't know if this is a detonator or a cell phone he's holding i have no idea what it is but there's something that he's holding that I gave a grim black look to it. Now, this is where I forgot to do Mother's Milk with the grim black, and it will come back right after this part here, which is the broadsword silver I'm using on like some weapons. It's a very dark silver, which is good, so it's not too bright, not too shiny. It's just gonna give the guns and the hammer a little bit more of a look to it, uh, make them pop a bit more. And I'm doing all the little bells on uh, Terror's collar there because we're not gonna see him very much. He only gets two parts painted. Now, one thing I did forget to do is his eyes on Terror, but the um, Holy White kind of puts a shadow effect in there, and there you go. So here's uh, Mother's Milk getting his uh, black hair and beard done. Uh, the next color we're using is Glittering Loot, a beautiful gold speed paint uh, that we're using on Starlight here on all her belts and all her little stars and stuff and uh, the bracelets around her arm or the embracers. I don't know what you want to call them. Anyways. Uh, there's two versions of Starlight, by the way. If you haven't seen the Soups version, there's her in her skimpy outfit and this one in her nice regular outfit. Uh, yeah, so there will be a link at the end to that video so you can take a look at it uh, if you haven't seen it already. So this is where I was saying I was bringing back out her cape, the vibrancy of her cape, the white, but keeping the shadow. So I'm just going on, technically I am actually using an air paint because it's super watered down the air paints. Like, and they're much easier to cover over speed paints, I find, and they kind of blend into it. Uh, whereas if I'd use just a regular matte white, which is what I'm showing on screen, I would have had to water it down quite a bit or make sure that my brush was quite wet uh, to, to get the effect that I wanted. So as you can see, I'm just going over the raised edges, making it real that cape pop again. And there you have it. The boys are painted and ready 
to face the soups possibly no 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 the soups are actually used as regular heroes in the zombie side game i want to thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed here are the lists of the paints i use for these seven miniatures thank you again and we'll see you all in the next one